Or is Shanti Page or both? Okay. I'm going to take a picture of you girls on your phones. <laughs> It's super cute. Right. Okay. I'm going to post you. Welcome to the Ignite Your Life show. My name is Jennifer Quinn. I also go by Jenny Q and I'm super excited to be joined by Shelly G, also known as, well, I'm doing that backwards, Shelly Gartman, also known as Shelly G. <laughs> anyway, so this is so funny. We are so excited to bring you the show live. We're actually at Frankie's Java in Meridian, Idaho. And we had a bunch of people say that they were going to join us, but then... It snowed. It didn't just snow. It's like snowmageddon, right? We're like snowmageddon. And so let's, uh, do you have those pictures for us, Rob? And there it is, right? You can see the snowmageddon. Perfect. And so, Rob, we're having a little bit of a glitch right here. I can't see the feed that's going to Facebook. All I see is a uh, black screen, but that's okay. We're going to keep going because I've got my phone right here. So right. we're going to be a little bit delayed, but that's okay. So. Is this your first live show that you've ever hosted or co-hosted? Uh, yes, host or co-hosted, yes. So yes. I've been on them, but I've never okay. hosted this. Okay, so, so that's so cool. And this is the first time that I've ever, number one, co well, no, I've co-hosted before. But it's the first time I've ever hosted in a, like a place. Like right. normally I'm in my little studio where it's all private and I get to just, you know, uh, be in my own world. But like we've got people here. There's coffee being made, so there's noise. It's, it's awesome. It's a little bit of heaven on earth, really. It really is. To be doing a show with, with coffee. It is. <laughs> so we're at Frankie's Java, again, in Meridian, Idaho. Uh, it's Snowmageddon 2. Yeah. What, how long has it been since we've had weather like this? They said 1985. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. So we forgot how to drive in the snow. We forgot, apparently, how to go anywhere in the snow. Because <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. We don't have a few people here. So we're going we're gonna to get going. So Shelly... Tell our viewers a little bit about your background. You're the founder and CEO of Women Ignite International, yes. uh, personal and professional development. But how did you get there? How did you get to be that, that, that person? Ah, that's a huge question. But like summary of that is I was in corporate America, um, did, did well, loved it. But then I got the entrepreneurial bug and I've never looked back. Yes. And um, started doing mortgage loans. And then I got into personal development when I was 26. So wow. that was like 20 years like ago. Like super young. Yeah, really young. Yeah. And fell in love with it. So I do this hybrid now of professional development, personal development, both in businesses and organizations, and then just with community events and groups. Love it. Adore it. And so that's a lot what we're about. So right. when we approach each other and we were collaborating with this idea, I thought, yes, that is that's yeah. my jam. Yeah. So last night, Women in Night International had a local networking event. And by the way, the weather was gorgeous. Like, was. I didn't even wear a jacket. People came out. I know, right? <laughs> People came out. And um, one of the things that you did talk about there is how important collaboration is to you. Right. Yeah. It's a big deal. Well, I just feel like everybody's amazing. That's, that's my personal trajectory. Everybody's a miracle, but 
we can get so much farther and do so much more together in collaboration. Like I really believe that's that's how we were designed to scale and grow exponentially. And it's so much more fun. It's way more fun. Like yeah. this morning when, when I showed up and it was snowing, you opened the door for me because I was carrying some stuff and you were just laughing. And we were just laughing. Like we were just laughing, you know. And uh, we had a few technical glitches, all my fault. Uh, but again, we just laughed. So yeah, so that was awesome. Well, but how, I want to know how did you come to this point? Because you've done a jillion different things. So tell us a little bit about that. that what does that mean if I do a jillion different things? You're like, just really talented <laughs> and you have 19 books to write. But Well, that is true. So actually, the way I got to this point with uh, live streaming is it happened about in the middle of 2015 and I logged on to Periscope and I was totally bitten by by live streaming. Uh, the bug, the bug, not by live streaming. <laughs> That's painful. <laughs> and, okay. um, you know, I started meeting amazing people from all over the world and I just couldn't stop. And then Periscope led me to, uh, to Blab, which no longer exists, which is where I started doing interviews. I interviewed people who demonstrated excellence in their field. And um, I did over a hundred shows there. And then I bounced over to Facebook Live with the production team of Inline to Audiovisual, who's also yes, producing this. Amazing. Yes, amazing. And um, started the, the Jenny Q show, the variety show. Um, but then when, when I met you and I was like, well, I kind of was thinking that I wanted to do a show like this with a co-host. And when I met you, I just kind of started spying on you that you didn't even know about. Oh, wow. <laughs> this gets creepier by the minute, I was guys. stalking you. And, but I was like, okay, this is great. So then, so here we are. We're yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. And I want to give a few shout outs to people who have joined in. Hello. Welcome to uh, John Paul and Rachel. And we have, and you guys, I can't see that you're here unless you comment. Yes. So go ahead. And I see Rainy is here. Hello. And, uh, let's see, get, give, give a comment. Let us know where you're watching from so that we can give you a shout out. That's right. Um, anyway, so we've got kind of some exciting, yes, not kind of, like super exciting. <laughs> I was going to say, you need to get a little more pumped up. <laughs> no, like I can't wait. Let's talk about the whole goal of this show. What's your vision? We should have talked about this before we went live. No, I like I like organic. <laughs> What's your I really do. Well, my goal, I mean, my goal is just that everybody, everybody has a mission on this planet. Like you were born for a reason. That's my belief. You may not know what that is yet, but you have a reason to be here and push this planet forward. And we just want to help people reach their goals and their dreams. And um, we don't just want to talk about airy fairy stuff. Like we want to get to the heart of the matter. We want to find out what makes people tick, what makes you successful, what are some of the struggles that you've been through, and how can we all collectively boost each other up to get to that what's next. I love that. I love that. And <clears throat> while I've been stalking you, <laughs> excuse me for playing my throat, but while I've been stalking you, I've noticed that you are 100% consistent in that vision. Like, yes. you know, it doesn't matter what we're doing or where we are or what we're talking about. You are always pulling... Uh, from the story or from the conversation, how someone is excelling in their life and how they're living in their strengths and how they're living with passion and, and then what the uh, dial-up is. That's your phrase, right. what the dial-up is, you know. Um, yeah, and so we have a really similar vision. I have been uh, maybe addicted, I'm not sure if that's the word, but really fascinated with personal development. Um, my first book that I remember actually reading, I've never been a fan of fiction, but my first book that I remember reading was when I was 13 years old, I found a copy of Your Erroneous Zones by Wayne Dyer. Hmm. And, and I was glued to it. I could not put it down. Um, so since then, it's just been that, that journey. So anyway, so I'm excited. I don't know. Should we get started? And two, let's do it. Okay. So our first guest is Miss Turley Harrison coming to us live from Lancaster, California. And um, this, Lucky. Is, this is an amazing woman. Yeah, she's warm. Uh, but that's not why she's amazing. I'm she warm. comes from a very sunny town, so we're a little jelly right now. But <laughs> Turley's awesome. She uh, has published over 10 books. She's a real amazing human being, humanitarian. She has a franchise in California. Um, she's an owner there in Lancaster called Team Network Referral. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of uh, business referral stuff and helping each other collaborate there so she's a big fan of everything that we've been talking about and she's also a coach she's also the director of we publish and that's kind of specifically what we want to hone in on today I want to talk to her a little bit about her vision for we publish and why it matters to help people bring their stories and their messages their methods 
or whatever it is they want to bring to the world, especially in print. So welcome to the show, Terry Lee. Hi, Terry Lee. Welcome. Ladies, it's such an honor to be with you on your first show. Thank you Hi. so much. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor to have you on our first show. I'm sorry about Snowmageddon again, ladies. I don't think you're that sorry. It's okay. Okay. I'm not. I love you, but I, yeah, okay. You don't really care. It's okay. <laughs> But no, I do want to know, you know, I know that you've written a lot of books. You and I co-authored a book, so that was really cool for us to uh, um, get me into that publishing world. You held me accountable. But what is it for you? Why is it important? Why was it important, first of all, for you to bring your story to the world? You started with a pretty big story um, about, you know, living a shameless life. So in short, what was that about for you? You know, I think that sometimes we know, and there's a place within us that we know, that we know, that we know that it's time to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And it just became that time for me. And so one of the things for me is I lived so many years not being who I really was and afraid of what people would think of me. And so a lot of the, the mission of wanting to get your story out is about freedom right? And so that's why, that's what I've experienced. And that's what I want others to experience. And I think that sometimes you can be like, I'm, I feel bad about yourself, but the truth is I'm going to use a prop. Are you ready? The truth is, is that inside you're really super girl, you see? Oh. And so, so did you like my prop? I know, I know, I know. And so, so, but you can feel your whole life. No one's going to care about me. No one really wants to know me, but you know what? It's not true. It's not true, not at all. Right, so so then how does that translate to other people? Because it, you have an interesting perspective also being a life coach. So you're not just somebody helping edit stories and encourage people, coach people how to get their stories to the world, but what are some of the fears and obstacles that just normal people need to overcome? Because everybody's got a book inside of them, at least mm -hmm. one, right? Oh, I think they do. I think they do. One thing is that they need to own their story and be ready. And so I think that's one of the things that hanging around us, Shelly, you and I and, and Jenny Q helps them just really kind of start to get through some of that and be and be ready to tell it. It's so important that we realize that we may be the only one that has a, a certain message to give. And, and so if, if people are thinking about, I'm not good enough to tell this how-to book, I'm not an expert enough, you know, that's simply not true. I was talking to someone this weekend and I said, you know, I have a lot of guts thinking that I'm the one who can come and do this. And the person goes, yeah, but it's true, you know. And so we, we all need to come to the point that we have a lot of guts about telling our story because we really are the only ones who can really do it if you think about it. Right. And there's never like a perfect moment. I mean, I keep telling Jenny Q, she's got about 19 books to write. <laughs> you know, I think she has a couple of questions even in regards to that. Well, actually I do. So our, one of our guests that we have on the show um, coming up later is Amy Schmittauer. And Amy just yes. published her first book. Awesome. Yeah. And so I've been uh, connected with Amy for uh, over, well, I just saw on Facebook, it was our one year friend anniversary, um, but I but I've been following her for longer than that, and so um, you know I know that she has been so disciplined and so dedicated to writing her book, and so um, you said Terry Lee that that we just know when it's time to tell our story, like you know intuitively or intrinsically or whatever. But what I want to know is once you have that knowing, how do you go from that point to actually getting it published because mm. I know watching Amy she has been so disciplined you know and that has taken uh, a, a top priority in her life so so how does a person do that I think one is if you if you claim it if you put it out to the world and just say I'm going to publish this book or I'm writing my book and it's going to be done by these dates then guess what then you got to do it right Right. Or if you're a speaker, go out and pre-sell books, then you got to do it. But if you put it out there to the world, it just kind of makes you have to go do it. But you know what? You mentioned discipline. It's about consistency. It is about just diving in. When can I write? And just being consistent, making sure it's in your calendar and having accountability too. How about that, Jenny yeah. Q? Just yeah. having an accountability buddy, whether you have a book coach, a coach, 
or whether you just have your girlfriend that you're accountable to just, just, I'm going to do this. I have some people that I'm working with and I will just tell them, I want you to email me something every Friday. That way they know they need to move forward and send me oh. something once a week. Oh, that's really good. And you know, probably about a year or two years ago, I decided that I was going to write a book and Ironically, it was going to be a fiction book based on a true story, except but that you hate fiction. Except that I hate fiction. Yeah. So, uh, but but the point is, I that's not even the point. But thanks for bringing it up. No. So, <laughs> but the point is, I I have several friends who have published books, so I sent them each a question that said, "What you know? You published a book. What is the best tip you can give me?" And my favorite response was from someone who said, just write the effing book. Only he didn't he put it, he, you know, he was just like, just write it. Like we get so hung up on the yes. uh, other things. What are some of the things, Terry Lee, that you've found that trip people up when they want to write their story? Well, they think it needs to be perfect. And, you know, as you're writing, it can be a complete mess, right? That's what editors are for. That's, that's uh -huh. why we're here. And so just, he's right. Just get it done. If you get stuck, stop and move on. You might just have a moment when you're going to go write, and I just recommend just write what what you have in the moment. So if if you skip this story and move on into this chapter, whatever it is, just progress. Progress is where it's at, and don't worry about the mess that it looks like in the moment. So we don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Something that I love that I think Shelly G mentioned to me was sometimes we pre-edit in our head. Have you ever pre-edited in your head? And it's more important that you get it out and, and then we edit later because there might be some beautiful nuggets in there if you if you stop trying to clean it up as you're putting it on paper or on your computer. Uh, very good, very yes. good. And like to finish my book, I just have to say, I had to start speaking it. I, I ran out of time to write it. Uh, by the time I would get home at night, it was too late. My brain was mushy. So I'd be in the car driving around just recording my book. And for me, that's how I finished my book. So then did you have it transcribed? Or yes. Did you, yeah. And you, now there's apps that transcribe and do all of that too. But I had somebody actually transcribe it for me, which took a little more work because when you speak, you tend to repeat things and do, you're not pre-editing as much, which for me was brilliant. It was much more my authentic voice instead of me writing and editing while I was writing. So like for everybody, it's a little bit different. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Can I, before, before we uh, let you go, Terry Lee, I want to, I want to come back to the shame topic. Mm -hmm. because, okay. Yeah, because First, I'm going to ask you, is it true that we all have shame around something? I believe we do. I believe there's something that causes us to feel bad about ourselves as a person, whether it's something somebody said to us, how we feel about how we, our appearance, right? Or, or things that have been done to us. Yeah. Right. And, and so, so this, I found this interesting just the other night I was listening, I was watching a video on YouTube where Oprah was uh, interviewing Brene Brown. And mm -hmm. Brene Brown was talking about how you have to be very careful who you share your shame story with because you want to make sure that they're there to support you. And she, she said the five people, it was a cool video if you guys want to go watch it, but it was like the five people you should not share or the five types of people you should not share your shame story with. But when you're writing a book and you're putting mm -hmm. it all out there, you don't control that. So what, what thoughts do you have on that? No. <laughs> you're like, no, at that point, when you're going to write your book and like, like I did, I wrote my book and spill my guts of stuff. I didn't want anyone to know. Mm. And now I kind of chuckle because everybody knows. And so, so I didn't want like businessmen I worked with to know my stuff, but you know what? We are human. And if you feel ready to let it go and that you have a message that will help people, I think that's one of the biggest things. Our messages, our hurts, the things we've been through can totally help people. So if you feel you've owned it and you're ready, I, I think it's time to let it fly. That's sometimes how, how we're going to help people and just ch and change the world. Right, Shelly G? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You're all about that. You're all about that changing I, the world I thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's fun to hang out with her because we can change the world too. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Sometimes totally agree. it's the micro. Sometimes it's one book or one message or one method at a time. But or one tweet in my world. No, you know? I don't know if I'm changing the world with a tweet. <laughs> anyway, so Terry Lee, thank you so much for joining us. How can people reach out to you? I know that you're offering um, free consultations. How can they connect with you? Is it best to just reach out to Facebook Messenger or? Uh, I think Facebook Messenger would be great. Um, we are offering up a complimentary consultation to talk about the book project that you might be ready to work on. We're definitely looking for submissions from serious authors this year. So, so okay. Facebook Messenger would be perfect. 
Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Excellent. All right. Tara Lee, thank you so much. Rock on. Thank you, ladies. Have fun in your sunshine. Yeah. I will. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here, Terry Lee. My pleasure. Uh, so how many books have you written? Just one so far. So far. So far. My next one's loading even now. Okay, but you no, 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 I need to clarify. You've actually published one. I've published like, one. I've written some, but I have published Correct. Some. I've started about seven others. <laughs> right. And probably a lot of people have too. Okay, so we have some comments. I want to give some shout outs here. Ross Brand, hello, and CJ. CJ is watching from, I think I saw that CJ is watching from Atlanta. Is that right? Yes, Atlanta, Georgia. You're probably warm there too. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and then also we have Tim Gillette who joined Toby Brockner. Hello, Toby Brockner. Toby is a friend of Women in Light International. Toby's the owner of V Square Creative and he has done the Women in Light website. Yeah, he did our logo. He did our Ignite. Well, he, I don't know if he personally did it. I bet his company did. I'm sure. I don't know. You never know with Toby. He's got so many talents. Anyways, thanks for jumping in, Toby. And Megan is Megan. here. And Janet is what? here. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining and thanks for being here. And we are super excited to bring you our next guest. Oh, by the way, if you want us to give you a shout out, please leave a comment. And share, share this so we can get more people on the Facebook party. Yeah, totally, let's do it. Because we're bringing you more good stuff right now. We are going to bring you a photographer who is like, he works with women. This is what he does. He works with women to teach them how to look their best in pictures and he attack he attacks all of the you know all the negative self-talk that we have oh yeah yeah we well, i know oh yeah <laughs> are you kidding we all have it you know and and he and he works with women like on a uh in he does group like speaking mm -hmm. why are these words not coming up <laughs> like, like when you stand up in a bunch of people and you say stuff yeah yeah <laughs> He this does new speak, thing called he speaking. does consulting he works with women one-on-one -on -one. he works with large groups anyway he's here to talk to us about visual brand equity and give us some tips for looking great in pics and i'm yes. excited to introduce you to maybe you already know i'm steve kozark of steve kozark photography hi steve hi ladies how are you <laughs> doing awesome. well how are you i'm learning this um getting up on stage and talking to big groups thing the speaking thing oh that yeah yeah that it's trending it's, right now it's almost like this is my first time ever speaking <laughs> on a live video well we know better jen <laughs> so steve you're from california too right you're in california yeah i'm near san francisco in a, a town called danville which is currently in the monsoon season it looks like oh really but it's not snow so we kind of have not much sympathy for you okay okay <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Steve, give us a little bit of a background on how you got started with working with women, um, specifically in looking good in pictures. Okay. Um, I've had a talent development agency in San Francisco for years, and often moms or grandmas would bring their kids in and say, hey, what do you think about my child? And I'll say, well, your kid's cute, but you're the marketable one. But you're the and what? You're the what one? The Mark marketable one interesting because this is a more mostly a commercial market and so we're looking for people who are real people who can do commercials commercial print that type of thing and real people are those who book that so i'm looking for people who are moms and grandmothers who um and book jobs like that and, and what would happen is i get a lot of negative feedback they would say oh you're just trying to scam me or i'm you know i'm just someone's wife or someone's mom or my best years are behind me and I would say, no, you are perfect the way you are. And so we do, you know, the training and the photo shoots and that kind of thing. And all these little victories would start happening and clicking. I'm valuable. I'm, I'm, I'm fine the way I am. And they would have this sense of self value. And I would watch them. You know, they'd say, I'm, yeah, I have an agent. I'm doing commercials, but I am now feeling fantastic. I'm no longer just that invisible person. I feel fantastic. And something wow. where it was like, okay. It wasn't just people looking to get into commercials or to get into acting or modeling. It was business people. It was women in corporate. It was entrepreneurs. And the more I started working with people who are, let's just say, mature, and they would love the photos. And all of a sudden, that photo became the thing that would remove the barrier to writing that book, but getting on stage wow. or, or starting that program. So this is, this is what's kind of happened. 
That's fascinating. You know what, Steve? Wow. If, if you ha if you are willing to share, I'd love to hear the story because I heard it before you were on my show when I was on Blab, and you shared mm -hmm. the story. And it was just beautiful um, about your grandma. Are you willing to share that with us? Okay. Uh, let me get the Kleenex here. Um, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> My grandmother bought me my very first camera when I was about 10. My parents had split up and I wasn't handling it so well. And um, she took me out and kept me busy with the camera, showing me kind of what's happening outside with patterns. Look at that tree, look at the, the fence, look at the grass. And she started holding out her hand and say, photograph me. And over the years, she showed me beauty and, and pattern and structure and what I considered the tree photos. And she became my favorite model. Well, when she was about 85, she no longer allowed me or, or anyone to photograph her. And she said, if you know, cameras come out, I'm gone. I'm going to go back to my room. And she was staying with my, my mom at the time. Um, and, you know, I said, well, Grandma, this is kind of what we do. This is our thing. You know, <laughs> why? You know, she just said, I just don't look good in photos any longer. I'm, and what she was telling me is I'm disappearing. Mm. And fast forward another almost 15 years later when she passed away, we didn't have photos that looked like her any longer. We didn't, she might, photographically, she may have passed, she might as well have passed away, you know, 15 years prior. Mm. And so as, for her funeral, we had nothing that was current. And so my mother and I, as you do with, when people pass, as we were going through her personal things and we were in a, uh, and I think going through her safe deposit boxes and in the bottom of a little safe deposit box was a little square of paper and it was a photo that I had taken of my grandmother. I don't even know when, but it was one that she loved, I guess. And I flipped it over and it said, thank you, Stephen. This is my favorite photo. Aww. I love that. I forgot about that part of the story. And so that's another reason why I thought everyone deserves a photo that they love so much of themselves that they value that much. So when they're having a crappy day or they want to share with the, you know, this, this is what she had for her legacy. These days we're so lucky. We have digital, you know, if we don't like a photo, we just delete it. Yes. And so I, I kind of think we're so lucky in this country where we have even the luxury of being camera shy because there's a lot of places where women don't even, they're not even allowed to own a photo. And the moment they're born or can walk, they're thrust into mines or made to work until they can, they can either walk or live right. any longer. Right. So true. So true. And you know, I'm kind of seeing a theme here, an accidental theme. Right. <laughs> what do you see? Yeah, well, just that whole so many times we feel not enough. We feel right. not enough for photos. We feel not enough to write our story like that. As a life coach, I've seen that a lot. So like, let's not let that get in the way right. in the things we need to do. Right. Exactly. Um, and it's actually turned me, I went and I'm, I'm a coach now and I've got my certificate and I'm working with people because this has turned into a, a life's work. Right. Wow. It's turned guess, into yeah. Not only helping people to, I'm called the camera guy for the camera shy. And yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so let's just jump into the 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 five T's. Well, we're only we only have time for three T's. We're gonna do <laughs> five T's of looking great in photos, but we also have a bonus. So uh, so let's go ahead and just jump into those. You uh, provided us with slides. Thank you for that. So we're just gonna turn it over to you to kind of kind of go through. Uh, these five T's. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I've I've got um, no slides on the screen in front of me. <laughs> okay, so you've got. I know. I know. We we are having a little bit of a, a technical glitch on our end. We can't see. There's some. What's, okay. Now we'll just tell you. We'll look at the phone. So you've okay. got uh, number one for turn. Go ahead and talk about that. Turn. Okay. Well, you know what the camera sees first. The camera sees largest, and it sees it in two dimensions. Oh. So it's. It's flat. <laughs> so there you go. All of a sudden, you're doing this. That's <laughs> what, Steve? Go, go on. Go ahead, as you were well, saying. And you can see it already, right? I'm already slimmer. Right. <laughs> so if you, especially women, uh, if you turn, uh, you know, about two thirds, three quarters away from the camera, you give the camera curves. You give the camera triangles, and it really does make an illusion of a less flat image so with the camera sees first the camera sees largest another thing about about turning is um if you're if you're uh, a bit let's just say busty 
um, if you if you be careful, don't gonna breathe in too much like this. But a lot of people when, when the camera hits them, they breathe in and they get really tall. And uh, I would suggest you know, doing turn, exhaling and smiling uh, a bit. Also, if it bends, bend it. You can bend your arms. You can bend your elbows. You if you bend. Uh, you turn your your chin toward your shoulder. Now for men, it's just the opposite. Men, we want our elbows out. We want to be squared to the camera. We want our, our face okay. tightly forward. And so this is the next the next slide that we have. Let's show the picture of that. Yes. Yeah. What you see here is my friend uh, Kay White and her husband Snowy on, on holiday, as she calls it, because they're from uh, the UK. And he's, she's doing it correctly in both photos. She's slinked in and she kind of turned to the camera, where in the first photo, uh, Snowy, <laughs> His stomach is a bit prominent, and he's not a big guy, but it doesn't look so attractive. Whereas in the second one, he's more uh, positioned correctly, and you can oh, I can look at on my camera here, and he looks much more attractive uh, in the photo. Right, right, right. Awesome, excellent. And so, really, as a couple, you should probably practice taking pictures together. Definitely. And another thing about two people together, guys, um, if you two ladies put your your foreheads together for me like i'm taking your photo a lot of times people think they have to touch foreheads for photos and all that does is open up all this area under here right but we don't need to necessarily do that but a lot of times that's what we feel like we have to do oh so, okay yeah, there's no need for you to touch foreheads you can just both put, you know put your arms around each other's lower backs and yeah. you're good that's kind of personal though <laughs> okay so let's go to the turtle this one, just the name of this cracks me up turtle the turtle so the turtle is the most popular of my teas. Uh, this is the one when I travel around the world and speak, everyone says, this is the one, the one tip that's helped me the most. And the turtle is going to visually have you lose about 10 to 15 pounds right in this area here. Uh, a lot of times when I bring a camera out and I say smile or I bring the camera out, people do this. Right, right. Well, we know already that that's not very attractive. Um, and and it doesn't have, you don't have to even be thick in this area for that to happen. So the turtle is slightly forward and slightly down. Okay, slightly forward and slightly down. Yep, okay. and that may feel a little strange, but it's kind of like a turtle out of the shell. Photographically, it will slim this area. It'll give you a chin. And especially you want to ask the photographer, and if they don't know this, they should to be either at your eye line or slightly higher, and that will help with the turtle experience and visual. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, so we might be teaching our photographer a little something, something. Again? We might be teaching our photographer a little something, something. I miss what you said. It looks like Steve is frozen. <laughs> oh, are you yeah, back? There I'm you back. Are. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay, so let's go on to the tickle. Well, tickle is just self-explanatory. The best way to become more attractive in photos is to simply smile. Right. Have a good time. Relax. You know, a lot of times people, when the camera's out, they get this look. They're smiling. Ah. It's kind of like, am I doing it? Yeah. Am I doing it? Right. <laughs> right. And, and a lot of people aren't happy with their smiles. You know, they're, 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 they don't like their teeth or there's something about their smile they don't like. It's okay. You can still smile. Just find the right smile that works for you. It could be a half smile. It could be a smile that's mostly up here. It could be what's called, what's called a scrunch, which is just kind of a. Yes, no, that's good. And so we have a question from Ross Brand, um, yes. live stream universe, and he wants to know if these tips work for video as well. They work for video. Um, being conscious of yourself in video um, is very important. Yes, the camera is, is uh, it's a little bit different because right now I could be moving and talking and if you freeze me, that's, <laughs> that's a single frame so the single frame camera can capture the right frame at the right time with video um positioning the body is important but then there's also being the rocking back and forth um right. the micro expressions those types of things so video it's definitely it's a different skill set but the visual aspect still holds true okay that makes total sense okay let's move on to groups this is the bonus for today and i love this one like how many times do we do group selfies is it called a selfie it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a groupie it's a groupie <laughs> awesome so how often do we do groupies and then we're like oh that did not go well so show it's us people, it's a weepy. yeah <laughs> well groups same thing kind of holds true uh, um 
what I always say is what makes it, the first thing I do when I get up on stage, other than having everyone in the, in the crowd take my photo, whatever happens, is ask them what makes a really good group photo. And a lot of times people say, you know, is everyone smiling or grouping, that type of thing. Oh, no, what makes a really good group photo is when you look good in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, there's tips to that. The, uh, the, slide, the slide that's up right now shows what a lot of people might do. Um, you want to ask the photographer, of course, to not be below you. A lot of times when people line up in a photographer for a group photo, the photographer gets down on the floor to try to get more people. Well, that's not a very attractive photo, as you can see here. Not so much. Right? It's not very attractive. Um, you would like to have people to um, the photographer be at least eye line or slightly higher, and you'll see that in the next in the next frame, where you can put people together. Oh, yeah, right? It looks so much better. That's the same group. It's slightly different grouping. The other thing about group photos is you don't always have to be touching or arms around each other. You don't have to um, put your foreheads together, that type of thing. And typically, there's a the biggest secret about group photos. The person in the middle looks the best because they have, they have prime real estate. Everyone else is putting their arms out, up, touching. Person in the middle. If you put your arms out and say group photo, everyone else comes around you. You've got prime real estate. I can just I know see. Where you're gonna be. <laughs> I can just see the next time we're at a women hanging night event and we're doing a group photo. Shelly and I are gonna be like. Well, it <laughs> happens every time I come back to a group. They do that exactly right. <laughs> now, but the other aspect is this: two things can affect the person on the ends. They're typically the last people who want to be in the photo and they're not always feeling comfortable. And if it's a wide angle lens taking the group photo, the people on the end tend to look wider. Wide, wait, whiter or wider? Wider, as in wider, wider. wider? not thinner, wider. wider. Because yeah. a lot of times they're standing like this on the end or they're, they're, doing, they're leaning in um, and just distortion of lenses, especially wide angle lenses. You can look, you can tend to look wider uh, if you're on the end. So again, prime real estate, be the one in the middle. You can control everything. Well, speaking of prime real estate, we have a lot of influencers or people that want to be influencers or speakers or coaches, consultants. A lot of people, as you very well know, want to do that branding and they're taking photos of themselves or having pictures taken and memeing them and all of that. What is trending right now in this moment? Because we want to be cutting edge, right? We don't want to be what was. For those kinds of pictures, what do we do or not do for those kinds of promotional pictures? Well, I would say if you look at, um, well, we used, you talked about Oprah earlier. Oprah, when she had, well, let's just go lifestyle photos. Photos that tell the story of your life as it's happening. These are controlled and they're, and they're even um, sometimes composed and pre-composed, but they're, they're designed to tell a narrative of what's happening in your life. And this is what I call visual brand equity is every photo that you, that you release I don't care if it's officially or formally released. This is part of your brand. It affects your brand in some way or the other. So lifestyle photos, narrative photos that actually give people a view into your life and to what you're doing. This is, why, this is why the very first thing I do when I get on stage is have people, 400 people stand up and take my photo with their cell phones and then tag me. It's because suddenly 400 to 800 photos just hit the internet. I don't care if they're good or not. All the people who are following me or giving a crap about what I'm doing suddenly have all of these trending photos of me on stage. This is great for my brand. So that's another thing that's so popular, utilizing yeah. images to build uh, your brand so that people are following and they're interested in what you're doing. Excellent. So I do know a lot of people that are scared to do that, though, because they're like, oh, I just don't want people to feel like I'm so cocky and blah, blah, blah. What do you say? I mean, what's your closing remarks as far as what's your encouragement to them as far as don't worry about that. Get your get your branding out there. People um, obsess. We think we're addicted to thinking. So that's another thing. People don't care. It reminds me of my favorite Jim Rohn quote. And he said, uh, you, oh shoot, it was such a it good It was one. so good. Oh, he said, you'd be offended if you knew how little people thought about you. <laughs> right, right. And other people's opinions about me are none of my business. Right, that's right. Right. So I would say, go, go out there, utilize your image in the best way for your brand. You know your people, you know the people that you want in your community and the people you're trying to attract. So right. of course being purposeful, you want to, when Oprah, when Oprah had the rubber stamp on every photo that went out to the public, and she had control of that, she did very, very well, but she had a good coach who told her to let go of that. 
when, uh, she let, when she let go of that, her lack of a better word, approval ratings went up 42%. When other people, other people chose her photos for her for release. Jeez, that go. is compelling. That's Let's compelling. get our ratings to go forty-two percent. We right. are the only ones who obsess about our photos, ladies. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. true. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have to have you back to share the other tea, the other two teas. And um, how can people find you if they want to connect with you? I'm Steve at stevecozart.com. You can definitely reach out on Facebook. Um, or email me. I, uh, I work with people all over the world. Even if I'm not the photographer, I help them plan their visual brand equity so that when they meet with a photographer, they know what they want and what they need for their business. I, I usually look at about six months ahead to one year of the business plan and help them plan those photos. Wow. Wow. Fabulous. All right, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. So remember when we were doing our photo shoot? Like it was a couple which weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like which one? But, but you know, when we got all the pictures back, it was like, for me anyway, my favorites weren't the posed ones. My favorites right. were the candid shots that the photographer captured. Too. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. With me cracking up or your hand going like that, fixing my hair or whatever, you know? Yeah. Those are my favorites. And so, yeah. I think people love that, though. I think people are more into that organic, transparent, like, what do they really like? Let's give yeah. them a snapshot of who Ginny Q really is. I think people are hungry for that. Well, maybe not. Well, just or who I am. Maybe yeah. not you. Maybe but. Not. <laughs> Anyway, who else do we have for him? So, <laughs> who, who's our next guest? Our next guest? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So, you know, sometimes as you're like surfing the net, that's such a big place. It's okay. But people capture your attention and you like binge on everything that they've ever done. And that's what I did with our next guest. Like you a year and a half ago, I did, I did stalk her. I'm not gonna lie, but what happened was she, like, she just was captivating, and um, she's like this huge YouTube sensation. Um, she just wrote her first book, and I want to show a clip of something that she did about three years ago. She captured the attention of Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk um, by doing a book review. Uh, for his jab 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 right book, you remember that book? Yes. And she sang the book review, and it totally got his attention. And I just want to show a clip of that before we bring her on. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't usually sing book reviews, but today you can thank Gary V. I don't need to hang my stocking there upon the fireplace Because this book has all the answers to do good biz in the social space I just want my fans to like my posts, snap my grams, pin my videos Make my wish come true All I want for Christmas is jab, 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 right Okay, so how, what's not to love about that? I know, it's adorable. What's not to love about her? I know. And, and, and beyond that adorableness is this very smart, savvy businesswoman. So I'm excited to bring her on. I'm so excited, okay. yes. Hello, welcome to Amy Schmittauer, also known as Fantastic, and now the blog boss. Welcome, Amy. Hey, Amy. Oops, we can't hear Amy. She's muted. Are you muted, Amy? I always do that to myself. I, I'm trying to stay quiet and then I forget to turn it back on. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing really well. It's so exciting to have you on our premiere episode. I know. I'm so honored. It worked out perfectly. No, we're honored. So there. So Amy, you do so much. You just this book, Blog Like a Boss. And um, it, I, I noticed that within... It might have been the first day, but within days, you were number one rated bestseller on Amazon. That's where I saw Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Tremendous honor for me. So, yeah, that was really cool. Really cool. Yeah, that's very cool. So for people who may not know what blog like a boss is, can you give us just a brief definition of what blogging is? 
Absolutely. So vlogging at the most basic level is simply just like blogging, but it's in video form. So that's okay. how I like to describe it. If you're providing value, information, enter entertainment, whatever it is in video, you're vlogging. And so I wrote a book about that because I, I think we've seen over the years how incredibly valuable video and blogging have been for growing a brand and, and exposure and things like that on the internet. So I wanted to help people and companies be able to do this in a way that is most efficient for them by keeping their eye on the prize. Why are we doing this? And make it effective in turn, but also remember that we're here to be relatable. And a lot of times we forget that as a business, we're trying to get the product out there a lot. And so I really wanted to put these worlds together and say, here's the comprehensive guide for getting awareness out about you and what you do well. And that includes your product or service, um, but in doing it in a relatable way that people want to subscribe to and continue to learn from. Very cool. And earlier I was talking about how the, you know, cause just observing you and, um, I just want to address this. Like I've actually hired you for consulting and, uh, I was a member of your, um, social authority group, which is just this huge wealth of information. If anybody, uh, is looking for, you know, some, I, I want to say coaching, but it's more than that. It's support. It's, uh, you know, getting the insider tips and tricks. Um, and so you, you have that, but, um, oh, I totally lost my question. I think it was brilliant too. No, I remember. So what I was saying earlier was I've, I've observed you over the past year have like an amazing discipline to get your book written. And, um, but what I want to ask you, we've kind of talking about getting your story out there, uh, getting, uh, past the shame, uh, putting yourself out there. What kind of challenges have you experienced in that area? Because you started with YouTube very early on. Um, so you've kind of grown with that. So what are some of the things you can share with us how you overcame, uh, you know, the shame or the fear or whatever? You know, it, starting out video blogging, it was 2007 for me. So in internet years was a long time ago, especially wow. with like, with video specifically, because even today, I think people have a hard time looking at a camera and, and feeling super comfortable about it. So it was the same for me. I think I just got to a point where I was like, my message is too important. I can't keep getting into my own head. And the people that I might be too much in my own head about, uh, like, what are they going to think about me? Or what's mom going to say? You know, this is kind of bizarre. I, I would thought, you know what, Th these videos aren't for her. I'm trying to help other people. And I think she'll be proud of me if I accomplish that. Mm -hmm. And so I think people have to kind of come out of that, that concern. And that's tough. Like that is the biggest fear. In addition to things like return on investment, how do we make the most of time and resources, uh, gear, do I have the right stuff? Is my phone enough? Spoiler alert. The answer is yes. So, you know, it's, it's these ideas that you have to kind of get past. And once you start chugging through all this content, you become a pro video blogger simply because you believe in your message and you're using this as a vehicle. Wow. Very, very good. So I love that. So it still comes back to the same thing we've been talking about. Yep. We have to, same thing. yeah, right. <laughs> get over yourself and all those little insecurities, which we all have. Yes. Like you seem like such a beautiful, confident person, but I'm sure you struggle with some of those voices in your head too. And you're saying you've just got to overcome that and do it anyway. Absolutely. I mean, it, there's always going to be a time and a place where it's like, no one's talking on camera, but I'm going to, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, kind of like where you guys are right now, right? Like, well, we're, we're in a, an ordinary place where people do ordinary things and we're talking to a camera, but <laughs> doing and how many people you're helping, you can sit there confidently and say, you know what? we're rocking this. We're doing this like a boss and we're going to follow it all the way through. We're not going to be, you know, half hearted about it. And I think that's the biggest thing is just continuing to believe in that message, noting every single person you help, no matter how small of a way they tell you, it could be a tweet or a comment, or it could be a long email or they tell you directly. So I think that's, what's kept me going. That's what's kept me really focused on looking at the lens. Like it's a person and not like it's this big, scary device that makes me look silly. Right. And that is huge, right? That is huge. That's and that's a hard transition to make from uh, looking at a lens, feeling like you're doing nothing to right. actually connecting with the, the person or the people on the other side. Right. What, what is the power uh, in video versus any other way of trying to get your message out to a lot of people? Well, you get all the senses, right? You get, you get the visual, you get to hear the person. I mean, you really get to set the stage. The first video that I made that made me understand the impact of video was just something really 
nice. I made specifically for a bride who asked me to be in her wedding. And I thought, oh, this will be so cute. And I'll play it at the rehearsal dinner. And I did. And it was very emotional. There were a lot of people in there wishing her well. And at the time, nobody was cutting videos together like this. It was like so crazy. And she couldn't believe people even took the time to say it. And not only was she just emotional about it, but the whole room was. And I thought, what a concept. I made something for one person. And even though everyone in that room didn't know every person in the video, maybe it wasn't even from our hometown, they still watched that video and were like, oh, that's so good. And I think that's what we're all trying to do. We're all just trying to create something that's so good we would share it. That's the secret wow. to something. You, you accomplish that at a, such a level with video. It's not the same. People don't read things the same way as they, or hear things in a podcast the same way. You get all of the senses of video and you can really accomplish expressing yourself if you do it, you know, the right way. Very good. Uh, I love this. We had a comment. Uh, Janet said, awesome. Now I know what vlogging is. <laughs> Yes, Perfect. and um, and Janet, I'll just throw it out there. You always pick up Amy's book because uh, it's conversational and it's like you're just sitting down having a, a conversation with Amy and she teaches you all the way through. So I, I have a question for you with regard to uh, live video. Is live video considered vlogging or no? Absolutely. It, it, it's live vlogging, essentially, because what we're doing here is providing value, entertainment and all kinds of things. And it's video. And so in my opinion, yes, this is absolutely vlogging. It's just in a live format. And it's sort of like a variety hour idea. And that works. It absolutely works. I think people are getting into their own head about what vlogging is because of certain people that have taken it mainstream for one particular thing. And that's OK. That's good news for this industry. Yes. It's just you, you can accomplish a lot with vlogging, which is why I was able to write a book about it. And in so many words, was able to say, you know, you can do it the traditional way that you're thinking. There are so many other options. The fear of gear is often generated by the fact that somebody thinks they have to have a fancy camera and get their edit on and do all these bells and whistles, but you just don't. You can go on Snapchat and vlog like a boss. That literally Snapchat, the reason why that took off is because they gave jump cutting Yes. To the average user with yes. one button, like yes. it's, it's incredible, and so you can do it in any format. Well, Absolutely. I have I have a question for you, Amy. Um, I was watching one of your many many videos, and I loved it because at one point you said something that I resonated with. You were like, "Something special." I'm paraphrasing, uh, paraphrase Shelley, but something amazing is happening in 2017. Something is going on. Like people are really preparing for this amazing year. You said it, I've heard other people say it, especially people that are out there in whatever way they're called to make a positive change in the world and serve people. What is that about for you? I mean, maybe you've spoken to it a little bit, but what, what do you think is going on collectively? I think for me, uh, it, it, video is, is simply the vehicle, like I said. So that's not the purpose for me. It just happens to be a vehicle I'm good at. And so people learn that from me, but more than anything, I'm using this as an opportunity to show people how they can go after the life they want if they want it. And the only reason that I was able to do that or anyone I've ever helped has been able to do that is because they were unafraid to be themselves and get their message out there. And we used video to do it. But regardless, it doesn't matter what you do. You can blog, you can just you can live, live stream vlog, whatever you want. Just vote photographer. You can do whatever you want. You can use whatever medium you want. But if you don't do something, you can't accomplish what you really want your life to be. So rather than sitting around thinking, oh, I wish I could be doing this. I wish I was here. I wish I was there. I think probably the greatest version of success for me is that I wake up every day and there is not a moment. And this, it was not like this in high school. So I think this is why I'm making this, you know, this assumption. There's not a moment where I'm like, I wish I was someone else or I wish uh, I was somewhere else. But I never, that. ever, ever think that. And I think that's probably one of the greatest accomplishments of my life that I'm able to say that. Yes. I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right than I, where I am right now. I wouldn't want to be anyone else. I'm very blessed for what I've accomplished. I know I have a lot more to do, but I want to do it right here in this body on my terms. And I went out and made that happen. So I would like to think that people follow me because they're doing that for themselves, even if I'm just teaching them the small detail of using video, social communications, and productivity to get there. Wow. Like, honestly, that is so powerful. And it's unfortunately so rare to hear 
a woman say that? And I'm like, actually like getting emotional. Like, I'm so proud of you. How like, do you remember high school? I always wanted to be someone else in high school. And I'm like, wow, like what a, what a cool moment when you're yeah. like, I think I've got myself figured out. I, I, I can do That's this. That's so I just so one last question. Oh, you faded for a minute. There you are. One last question for you on that. So I'm with you. I don't ever want to be somebody else. I don't, I love my calling, but I still have bad days or bad moments, right? Where life lifes me and it's overwhelming and whatever. Absolutely. What do you do in that moment? What are some of your um, coping mechanisms or how do you continue? Because it's the committed and the consistent that are going to win. It's not because every day is perfect. What do you do in that case? Usually in that moment, a lot of swear words are happening. And then I'm like, okay, there's a reason for that. So like, okay, so we know, we know something's going wrong or, you know, it's just the energy hasn't been exerted in some way. So I'm like, I got to go to the gym or I I've been eating like crap and it's all starting to build up. I think we don't think enough of what we've done to ourselves that made us feel that way, even though we want to blame everything else that's going on. No matter what someone or something or some circumstance has done to you or it feels like, likely something happened with you to get you there. So just correct it. So I'm, I'm not the role model of, of not having a, a, you know, a bad day or whatever it is, but I am able to say like, this is on me. Because again, like this is my body and I chose it and I'm not, I don't want to be anybody else. It, it comes with all the territory. So yeah. it's simply, okay, how soon, how soon can we get eight hours of sleep so that we can wake up and have a new day and like hopefully like wash. Usually I sleep it off and I'm, I'm very fortunate that I sleep very well. I know a lot of people don't sleep well. Like I take advantage of the fact that I sleep well. I get seven to eight hours every night because usually the next day, whatever I was mad about the day before is like not that bad. And some question I had in my head, I figured that out too while I was sleeping. It's wow. beautiful. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Appreciate no, it. so good. So good. Amy, thank you so much for being, you know, I'm a super fan. I have been since the moment I laid eyes on you on video and um, I can't thank you enough for being on our premiere episode. Uh, thank you for being here. And if you have, if you're watching and you have more questions about technically how to do this, how to vlog, how to get started, that's what Amy's book is all about. It's mm -hmm. vlog like a boss and she takes you step by step by step. Um, all the questions so you can awesome. even think of are already in that book. So go find it on Amazon, uh, go to vloglikeaboss.com and uh, pick up your copy. Amy, thank you thank so, you, so Amy. much. Thank you both for having me. This was great. Okay. Congratulations on the show. Thank you. Listen to us. <laughs> totally different voice. And so blah, blah, blah. so the you. funniest thing just happened, you guys, while we were in Amy's segment. We didn't know, I didn't know it was going to happen. Did you? Which part? Oh, so our photographer who did our photo shoot to do pictures for this show, yeah, the promo pictures, he showed up to take pictures of us recording our first show and that is the coolest thing and so thank you keith thank I, you keith. thank you like he's over there smiling. you want to say hi you want to come over here okay he's gonna come over here cool 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 yay you can take well i'm gonna take a picture of them but here's keith there you go keith Bevin. Yay! <laughs> and so because of what steve just taught us right i wasn't freaking out going what's the angle that he's gonna get oh it's gotta be in the middle <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Shelly, this is a wrap. What do you think? It is. I'm so excited. Yes. No. Thank you so it much for being fun. with us on our first show. Yeah. Thank you so, so much, you guys. And I also want to give a huge thank you to Rob Hicks of Enlightened Audiovisual. He has been nothing but patient. Rob's our hero. He really is. He's been nothing but patient. Uh, and all this, you would not believe all the audio stuff we had to get. I think we might be a nonprofit because of our disability with technological <laughs> stuff that Jenny Q and I have. But he's so awesome. But he got us set up. He spent hours with us on Saturday prepping and then time today. So, Rob, thank you so much. Thank you. And um, thank you to Terry Lee. Thank you to Steve. And thank you to Amy thank for being the guest on our premiere show. I hope you guys take these tips from today and the theme that no matter what your self-talk is, what your challenges are, slay those dragons and do what you're called to do anyway. And if you don't know what you're called to do, just keep pursuing and finding out what that is because there's something. That's right. And whether you're a woman or a man, you can follow us over at Women Ignite International because we're all about supporting you to go do your that's right right okay so and with that we're out we're out see you bye next guys. time bye bye